I'm Seth. Seth is an experienced machinist, a Fusion user since 2014, and loves helping people use Fusion for manufacturing. So today, we're going to take a look at a question from one prestigious fudge14 from Reddit. This individual was looking for help with the deburring cycle. They've recently upgraded to the manufacturing extension, so they're new to all the toolpaths that it's added. They're struggling to find a solution for this particular toolpath on the deburring cycle. They want it to deburr the edge on this tooth form with just one cut rather than having the retracts at certain point. They've attached the photos of what's happening along with details of the toolpath. And of course, any help would be appreciated. So I just quickly knocked out a quick model. And of course, we need to do some preparatory machining of these features. And ultimately, I ended up at a deburred toolpath that had these uh, missing sections and some retracts. Some of the answers provided in the Reddit thread lent some credibility. There was talk of um, reversing direction, settings in the linking tab, as well as the passes tab. But ultimately, what I suspect is happening is down at the very bottom of your tool data tab, you have your shaft and holder. And so what the shaft and holder does is it provides collision detection against the shaft of the tool as well as the holder. In this case, this tool does not have a holder, so it's ignoring that. But because of this shaft clearance, which is defaulted to one millimeter or 40 thousandths, it will have some effects on the tool. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this to zero and we're just going to recalculate and it's going to take a minute. And so now we have a deburr toolpath that runs nice, smoothly all around, and there's no retracts. So that was nice, short, and simple. However, you have to have the manufacturing extension to use this toolpath. Now, don't get me wrong. The manufacturing extension is packed with value. There's lots of things in there that benefit all sorts of shops. But if you can't swing the coin for that, it's like, how do I deburr this feature? So I took it upon myself to give you guys a couple of examples on how you can debur a complex curve such as this with a uh, other toolpaths that you have access to. And so again, I copied the same toolpaths. And now we have two options here. You'll notice that the part now has a little chamfer modeled on it. We do this so we can use either a blend toolpath or a flow toolpath. And these are available right here. So we have flow and we have blend. And let's take a quick look at the blend. In the blend toolpath, I have set my offset passes to surface boundary and I've selected the nine faces. Setting nothing else, going over to our passes tab, we wanna set it to a large enough pass uh, step over. If it was set very, very small, we would end up with seven or eight uh, different passes across here. So the largest I can really go is um, about 12.2. And we we do end up with, with two passes, you can see that. I, I probably want to reduce the step over a little bit so we don't end up skipping this section here. And the same deal goes for the flow tool path. The flow gives us three. Um, but if you're trying to debar a complex shape such as this, these are two options that work very well. Um, prior to us introducing these two toolpaths, you can also get a nice solution with scallop, although it tends to be a little bit jittery in the corners. And there you have it. Hopefully that was helpful.